Hi everyone, I'm Allison Smith. We are so happy to have you here with us from the Energy Cast Studios in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Let's take a look at April's top stories. A newly formed coalition is positioning our region to become a national leader in energy development. Learn how the Oak Ridge Corridor Development Corporation plans to boost and expand business growth in East Tennessee. And crews are taking on their next challenge on the Uranium-233 Disposition Project, a cracking open canisters of new material that's nothing like what they've handled before. See how they're processing this heavyweight task. And Oak Ridge High School students are turning shop class into a business. Wildcat Manufacturing is raking in thousands, locking down partnerships, and cranking out cool products. Uh, find out how these students are making waves in the community. A new local coalition is focused on making East Tennessee a national hub for energy innovation. The Oak Ridge Corridor Development Corporation is bringing together communities, industry, and education to power the future with nuclear leading the way. The future of American energy could be rooted right here in East Tennessee. This is where it all comes together in the Oak Ridge Corridor. I mean, th this is the, the single point of contact of Okay, how do all these resources come together? The newly formed Oak Ridge Corridor Development Corporation represents a unified effort across Anderson County, Roan County, and the city of Oak Ridge to coordinate planning, development, and promotion of the region as the epicenter of the nuclear renaissance. It's the collective spirit, the, the unity, that can achieve so much more than what we can on our own. The Oak Ridge Corridor is positioned as a key player with decades of expertise, infrastructure, and a workforce ready to build the next chapter. We have a lot of the skilled workforces, we have the land, we have the know-how, we have the partnerships, we have the educational institutions, we have so much that is ready to answer that call for Manhattan Project 2.0. Roan State Community College is already training the next generation with a new nuclear technology program designed for the growing industry. It doesn't matter what your business is. Are people in the area available? Do they have knowledge? Do they have experience? Do they have expertise to do whatever that is? Private companies are taking notice. Big names like Triso X and Kairos Power are already moving in signing deals with Google and Amazon to power AI data centers. This is a generational opportunity that we have to, to grow our communities um, industrially, commercially, residentially, uh, and, and raise our quality of life in ways that we've not had in a very long time. Just like the original Manhattan Project, the Oak Ridge Corridor is transforming again. Cleaned sites are ready for new companies, and they are located in a community that boasts the top experts in the field. There's no other community in, in the country that is as prepared to see the nuclear growth, to meet the demand for nuclear energy than Oak Ridge is. With momentum and a shared vision for the future, the Oak Ridge Corridor is ready to power America's energy future. A big step for Oak Ridge's Uranium-233 Disposition Project. This time, the material is tougher and heavier to handle. Isotech just opened the first canister of a new material, kicking off a new phase of processing. This project is part of a larger task to eliminate the nation's U-233 inventory stored at ORNL. Crews are now working with RCP-06, and it's nothing like what they've handled before. Until now, the material isotech processed in hot cells was an oxide or powder form. RCP-06 is a solid two-foot-long ceramic block. Breaking it down is no easy task. It took years of preparation, and they had to design a cutting device strong enough to slice it into safe, manageable pieces. The equipment had to be designed to handle the additional weight, the, the additional dimensions of the material. Then the, the material itself is much harder. Um, we're used to be able, being able to just scoop out a little bit of material and, and adjust you know, to gram quantities easily just by using a spoon or something. 
uh, because this comes out in chunks, it just makes it a little bit more difficult to, to get the exact amount of material that you want to process. There are 27 RCP-06 canisters. The first two will be processed this year. The rest will require more planning due to their contents. But crews expect to begin processing those in 2026. So far, Isotec has processed 40% of the remaining uranium-233 inventory that was stored at ORNL. And here's another important impact. This material is loaded with thorium-229, the rare medical isotope helping power the next generation of cancer treatments. Want to see how this project supports the fight against cancer? Well, check out our YouTube channel and be sure to subscribe for more exclusive stories. A crews have made visible progress since our last check-in on the Mercury Treatment Facility construction project. When complete, the facility will allow OREM to begin large-scale cleanup in areas with heavy mercury contamination at Y12. Sierra Hellemans shares the latest. Large-scale cleanup is underway at the Y12 National Security Complex. A major focus of that cleanup is removing scores of aging and contaminated facilities that date back to the Manhattan Project and Cold War. Some of the largest and most contaminated buildings at Y-12 contain large amounts of mercury from operations in the 1950s and 1960s. That mercury has also seeped into the surrounding environment. Before OREM can demolish those structures and address impacted soil and water, it must complete the mercury treatment facility. This vital piece of infrastructure will capture and prevent mercury releases from entering the nearby creek and flowing off site while crews take down massive mercury contaminated buildings and address the soils beneath them. The facility is designed to treat up to 3,000 gallons of water per minute and store 2 million gallons of storm water. Here's how it works the project encompasses two components at two locations. A headworks facility and a treatment plant connected by a half mile long transfer pipeline. The headworks facility will capture flow at the headwaters of the Upper East Fork Poplar Creek on the west end of the site, store excess stormwater, remove grit, and pump water via the pipeline to the treatment plant on the east side of Y12. The treatment plant will treat the water and then discharge it back into the upper East Fork Poplar Creek at the far east end of Y-12 before it flows off site. Crews have poured large amounts of structural concrete at the Headworks facility, and they've installed hundreds of tons of structural steel and numerous tanks at the treatment plant. Future work involves installing the remaining steel to finish the outer structure of the treatment plant, continued concrete pours at the Headworks facility, and the installation of a 2 million gallon storage tank in addition to equipment and systems at both facilities. Stay tuned for more updates on the construction of this key facility. Well, another risk is gone thanks to ongoing cleanup efforts at ORNL. OREM and UCOR have safely removed a canister of highly radioactive waste that's been stored on site for more than 50 years. Crews at the Transuranic Waste Processing Center processed and shipped 10 curies of radium-226 boron out of state for permanent disposal. This highly radioactive material was previously used in experiments at ORNL in the 1970s. The disposal process required a multi-layered containment system. The workers placed the radioactive source in a shielded vessel inside multiple drums. Next, they secured it in a Type B transportation cask, which is engineered for maximum protection, even under extreme travel conditions. And thanks to the team's expertise, the operation was a success. Once you get it to the operators, they know what they're doing, right? They're true professionals. Um, they're actually amazing at what they do. The same crew that processed in the hot cell came and loaded it and did the hoisting and rigging. So these guys are, are uh, yeah, consummate professionals, jack of all trades. This continues progress to eliminate inventories of legacy radioactive waste from Oak Ridge. That includes transuranic waste generated from decades of research operations. 
So far, teams at the Transuranic Waste Processing Center have shipped 94% of the contact handled waste and 78% of the remote handled waste. All right, preparations are underway for the demolition of Beta-1. It is the next major facility scheduled for removal at Y-12 to reduce risks and support modernization efforts at the site. Deactivating the 300,000 square foot building is no small task. The teams have prepared the upper floors for demolition, and now they're focused on the basement. However, that work is made more challenging due to flooding. Crews have pumped out over 10 million gallons of water and are installing a second treatment system to stay ahead of future water intrusion. To prepare the building for demolition, crews drilled more than 500 holes and started pouring thousands of truckloads of cement-like material into the basement. This method of filling the basement helps prevent water from entering the area and stabilizes the slab to support heavy demolition equipment. We're doing everything that we can as far as our part goes to try to get the basement dry so that uh, the rest of the teams can go in there and do what they need to do, whether that's the characterization that maybe they still haven't done yet or maybe that is the uh, asbestos abatement. Whatever they need to do, we're trying to keep it dry for them to be able to do that. All of this work is setting the stage for Beta 1's demolition, which is slated to start once crews finish tearing down Alpha 2. What if the future of artificial intelligence has a home in East Tennessee? DOE's latest private-public partnership initiative could make that a reality. DOE has identified Oak Ridge National Laboratory as one of 16 potential sites nationwide that could house future AI data centers. The Oak Ridge location includes a 562-acre area right next door to ORNL, with 100 acres ready for near-term development. It's powered by TVA's transmission lines and just minutes from a proposed small modular reactor. Combine that with ORNL's cutting edge AI and quantum research, and you've got a possible powerhouse site for next generation data centers. DOE is asking industry stakeholders to weigh in with projects aimed to be online by 2027. We've got a hot minute to take you to the second annual Tennessee Nuclear Energy Day on the Hill in Nashville. It was a great chance to spotlight Oak Ridge's contributions to nuclear energy. The day was filled with important discussions, networking, and plenty of advocacy to highlight East Tennessee's role as a leader in the nuclear and energy sector. With 20 exhibitors and over 100 attendees, including a bunch of legislators, Music City buzzed with conversation on how nuclear energy can power our future. The TDEC commissioner shared some insights on ways the state can keep fueling growth through cleanup and reindustrialization. There's a lot of industry that wants to come to our state and we need to have a place for them to come. And what better than coming to, to a cleaned up former nuclear uh, site, the former Manhattan Project site, and, uh, and I think some of the results that we have seen around that, Orano, a French company coming to that location, it will be the largest capital investment ever in the state of Tennessee. It is not your average high school classroom. The students in Wildcat Manufacturing are not just learning, they're running a business. Real clients, real revenue, and even an income. We take you inside the shop where business is booming. Oak Ridge High School students are taking charge of a manufacturing program that's much more than a classroom project. They're running a real business. Here they own everything and they work collaboratively to do that. So it is as real world as it gets. The students aren't just learning, they're earning. They've landed 36 contracts bringing in nearly $64,000 in almost three years. Wildcat Manufacturing operates as a school-based enterprise where students see direct results. Their earnings follow a profit-sharing model, but come from grant funding, with top payouts exceeding $2,000 per student per semester. The more engaged they are, the more on task we are, the more efficient we are, the more profit they make or that they get to take home as a, as a manufacturing stipend. So they're really 
get to understand what the real cost of doing business is. And like any successful business, marketing matters. Local news coverage has helped get the word out, but students have also built a reputation through networking. The other thing we started doing is developing partnerships with local manufacturers, so not just individuals. And so we'll actually have a number of companies come and say, you know, we need a, we need a small run on this. Uh, can you give us a quote? These partnerships are expanding, including work with Y-12 and Oak Ridge National Laboratory. But one project in particular stands out. Our own state uh, got a grant and they wanted to put a manufacturing kit in all of the local middle schools, uh, rural middle schools. And so the students um, won the contract to make 125 air engines. So it's a part made of multiple uh, aluminum, steel, and composite components, or pl 3D plastic components that are machined. And so they machined all of those and delivered them as a part of that project. So that was neat. As students manage client relationships and oversee project management, product design, and other aspects of the business, they're using top-tier tools to do the job. 3D printers, laser cutters, a water jet, a CNC machine, and more. For students like Kyra Colston, the experience gained is invaluable. It's okay to not know something. Just always ask and be open-minded because there's someone here to help you and it's rewarding at the end if you continue and you'll enjoy it. And the benefits are going far beyond this course. As students earn college credit at Roan State, and get a head start in careers in manufacturing, engineering, and business. After doing college visits, you realize how fortunate you are and just how much ability and just growth that you can get from a program quickly when there's less restrictions and limitations on you. And also just the ability for students to just expand their knowledge base faster in any way that they're willing to because Dr. B is willing to entertain anything as long as you are passionate about it. Wildcat Manufacturing isn't just preparing students for the future, it's helping build it. Big stories are coming your way next month. It is almost demolition day. The last structure from the former radioisotope development laboratory is close to coming down. We hear from the crew who tackled this high priority project at ORNL. We're going to have that and much more. And remember, if you work in environmental management at Oak Ridge, keep us in mind if you come across a story. We're always looking for news tips and story ideas from across the reservation. We'd love to feature what matters to you right here. Email your idea to oakridgeem at oem.doe.gov. And don't forget to follow us on our social media accounts. We post this show on our YouTube channel. Plus, if you liked a topic we covered here, we often have more on it over there. You can also follow EM News on our Facebook, Instagram, and X accounts. Well, thank you so much for joining us. New episodes come out the last Wednesday of the month, and you can watch on air or online, same places as always. We'll see you next month from the EnergyCast studio in Oak Ridge.